Welcome back. So when you're taking the ACT science section, you might be cruising along with the charts, graphs, and tables. You might feel like you're in a good groove, analyzing the data and answering the questions. But sooner or later, you come across the dreaded conflicting viewpoints passage. No charts, no graphs, just five boring paragraphs that want you to compare how different scientists feel on a given topic. At first glance, these passages might seem dull and impenetrable. However, there is a pattern to them. And once you learn to crack that code, you'll be able to handle the questions that follow. So in this video, let's talk about a great strategy to use on the conflicting viewpoints passages on the ACT science section. We're fighting for some of the hardest points now, so grab a pencil and strap in. And if you find this helpful, you know the drill by now. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you. Okay, let's dive into the conflicting viewpoints passages from the ACT science section. In previous videos, we've talked about some of the best approaches for the ACT science section. Check out my video here, where we talk about some of the best test-taking tricks for how you can handle these questions, even if you're totally stumped by the passage. Also, a few questions on each test might pull from outside scientific knowledge. These questions are far less common, but they will pop up on each test. Check out my video here for a crash course on how you can cram for these types of questions. But you can't rely on test-taking tricks or short-term memory for the conflicting viewpoints passages. These passages will ask you to analyze how different scientists or students feel about a certain scientific phenomenon. So there are no test-taking tricks around this. You need to be able to compare and contrast the opinions of each scientist. At first glance, these passages might appear complicated or even completely incomprehensible. However, there is a pattern to them. Each scientist will cover the same points, and usually, in the same order. Let's look at a mock passage and see what I mean. Let's say that a passage was analyzing how three different students spend their time after school on any given Tuesday. Of course, the real science passages won't cover that sort of topic, but let's just take a quick look so we can get an idea of the pattern that I'm talking about. Then we'll see how it's in play for an actual science passage. Student one. After school, this student goes right to basketball practice. She's usually there until 5.30. Then she comes home, showers, and has dinner. Tuesday dinner is pizza, but definitely plain because she thinks toppings are gross. After dinner, she works on her homework, watches a TV show, and heads to bed around 11.30. Student two. This student is beyond sleep deprived, so after school, he takes a nap for several hours. When he wakes up, he's pretty hungry. Tuesday night is also pizza night in that house, but he and his mom make it themselves with eggplant and spinach. After spending a few hours on his podcast, he might take a look at his homework, but there's no guarantee. Because he slept for three hours after school, he won't fall asleep until 3 a.m. He'll wake up for school four hours later, utterly exhausted. Student three. This student does her homework as soon as she gets home so that it's all done. After that, she takes a nice jog to clear her head from the day. From there, it's Taco Tuesday, especially with all of that fresh cilantro from her garden. After knitting a scarf for charity, she'll browse social media for a bit and go to bed at 10.30 sharp. Now, will the real science passages be that silly? No, but they will follow that same structure. The conflicting viewpoints passages will usually boil down to this type of format. It'll give you scientist one, and then how he or she feels about thing one, thing two, and then thing three, and then that'll be echoed in the next view, how scientist two feels about thing one, thing two, thing three, and so on for scientist three. In other words, they'll cover the same points and roughly in the same order. Now, it's difficult to decipher all of that information when it appears as dense text in paragraph form. So a great strategy is to turn all of that boring data into a visual. You can make a quick chart in your test booklet. It doesn't need to be fancy. It might look something like this. So with the information we just saw, up and down, we could say students one, two, and three, and then we'll list across the activities they do after school, type of dinner they have, homework routine, and bedtime. So as you read, you would take these key points and write them into your chart. It might look something like this. So student one plays basketball and then watches TV. For dinner, it was pizza, but plain. Toppings are gross. Homework was after dinner with a bedtime around 11.30. Student two takes a nap, later on works on his podcast. Dinner was also pizza, but with the eggplant and the spinach. Homework, eh, he might get to it, he might not. Bedtime, 3 a.m. And student three, very busy, 
will jog, knit, work on social media. Taco Tuesday in that house. Don't forget the cilantro. Homework ASAP, right away. And bedtime, 10.30, sharp. There's an exclamation point. Notice how much easier it is to digest all of this information when it appears in this format rather than in three dull paragraphs. This makes it much easier to compare and contrast the important details. So, let's give this a try. But now, let's look at a passage that's a little more ECT-ish. Let's read through a passage together, and after we finish, I'll give you a minute to come up with your own chart. Three scientists observed that in a certain population of cows, the baby calves were born with patches of either gray fur or black fur. Each one offered a possible explanation. Scientist one. All cows in the population produce the enzyme schmata. Schmata stimulates the production of a gray pigment in a cow's fur. However, cows in this population can also produce the enzyme phlegin. Phlegin stimulates the production of a black pigment in the cow's fur. If the gestating mother cow gets more than 10 hours of sleep every night, it increases her production of phlegin. This increases the likelihood that the baby calf will be born with black fur patches. All cows in the population are genetically identical, so they all have the ability to produce both of these enzymes. Scientist 2. Scientist 1 is correct that these cows naturally produce both the schmata and the phlegin enzymes. However, this is determined by the mother cow's diet and not the mother cow's sleep schedule. Mothers who consumed more than 500 grams of calcium each day were more likely to increase their phlegin production, which would lead to offspring with black fur. Mothers who consumed less calcium typically produced more schmata, which led to offspring with gray fur. All cows in the population are genetically identical, so they all have the ability to produce both of these enzymes. Scientist 3. All cows in the population naturally produce the enzyme schmata. The production of phlegin is determined by gene F, which has two alleles, big F, little f, and three possible genotypes, FF, FF, FF. A cow with either gene F genotype capital F, capital F, or the gene F genotype capital little f will produce only schmata, causing the cow to have gray patches. A cow with the gene F genotype little f, little f will produce phlegin, causing black patches instead. The mother's sleep and calcium intake do not affect the offspring's fur color. Yes, I'm making up silly words for the enzymes, but who cares? Take a minute and see if you can translate all of that information into some sort of visual chart. Feel free to go back to each screen to look at each scientist separately. Press pause, give it a shot. So your graphic doesn't need to look exactly like this, but here are the key points you wanna hit. For scientists one, two, and three, up and down, you might list across the key points of which enzyme they produce, whether or not it's based on sleep or food, or whether or not it's genetic. So breaking all that down, scientist one says yes, they produce both the schmata and the phlegin. And according to that scientist, it's all about the sleep, has to be 10 hours a night. So is it genetic? No. Scientist two agrees, schmata and phlegin are both produced in these cows, but this scientist says it's about the food getting 500 grams of calcium, so it's also not genetic. And scientist three says they all produce the schmata, but only sometimes the phlegin. So is it based on sleep or food? No, according to this scientist, it's genetic. And notice how they sprinkle in a little outside science for you to know in that third passage with the genotypes. A question from this passage might ask you to recognize that black fur is a recessive trait, since it would only appear if both alleles were lowercase, at least according to scientist three. Like we said at the top, once in a while, they might pull from actual science facts. Check out that science cram video I mentioned before for other topics that they like to throw in from time to time. But back to the bigger point. Look at how the chart makes it easier for you to analyze all of these details. It's far easier to process all of this information when you see it laid out in front of you with this visual instead of trying to find all of the details within the paragraphs themselves. So give this a try in your next practice test. When you come across the conflicting viewpoints passage, see if you can break down the key points that every author brings up. From there, try to translate that into a quick little chart. This will help you decipher the information much more easily, which in turn will help you compare and contrast how each scientist feels about that topic. This is a great strategy to make these harder passages a little less daunting, and maybe even fairly doable. So I hope you found this helpful. 
and check out that science playlist to cover the other strategies from the other videos that I mentioned before. Using all of these strategies in tandem really will help you tackle the science section on the ACT. Thanks for watching. And remember, plan your work, work your plan. Thank you.